Hi, I am Shridhar Ayer. I am an IEEE member with 14 years of academic research experience. I received the Young Scientist Award from the DSG Serve Government of India in 2013. I am the recipient of the Prozan Award from IEEE Comms of Bangalore Chapter in 2021. I have published over 90 peer-reviewed articles, multiple book chapters and a book by LAP publishers in 2018. My current research focus is on semantic communications and spectrum enhancement techniques for 6G wireless networks. Currently, I serve as an associate professor in the department of ECE, KLE Technological University, MSS CET, Belgavi campus. In this video, I will discuss how to publish in high quality top index journals. To start off, let's look at the academic publishing cycle. Nearly 30 to 60 percent of the submissions are rejected by editors for various reasons. The journals, to manage the peer review, have multiple and numerous reviewers in various domains. When it comes to editing and preparing, large amounts of articles are accepted. And then, in the production, numerous articles are already available. For publishing and disseminating, numerous downloads by a large number of researchers are available located around the globe. Then, how to plan the article? Well, one must see whether one is ready to publish or not. If one is not ready, then the work has no scientific interest. Therefore, the work could be outdated or the work has incorrect conclusions or the work could duplicate already published work. On the other hand, if one is ready to publish, then the work will definitely advance the field. In that case, Original results or methods would be mentioned, significant enhancement of published work would occur and up-to-date review of the subject or the field will also take place. So what makes a strong manuscript? A clear, useful and exciting message presented and which is constructed in a very logical manner that allows the reader, readers to easily grasp the significance is what is required from a strong manuscript. Also, the editors, the reviewers and all the readers want to receive well-presented manuscripts. So what article type one can choose? Well, one could choose what are known as full articles, which are substantial, complete and comprehensive pieces of research. Therefore, is my message sufficient for a full article? One needs to look at that. The other option is letters or short communications, which are quick and early communications. In this case, the researchers must ask the question, are my results so thrilling that they could be shown as soon as possible? The other option that one has is the review articles, which summarizes recent developments on a specific topic, and this is often submitted by invitation. So how to choose the right journal is the next step. Well, the aim to reach the intended audience of the work will answer this question. Also, one should choose one journal as simultaneous submissions are absolutely prohibited. The supervisor and colleagues could provide good suggestions and then one could have a shortlist of handful of candidate journals. In investigating the journal shortlist, look at the aims and scopes, types of articles which are considered by the journal, the readership, example, academic versus practice, is there any subscription versus open access, what is the speed of publication? Also, the peer review process, whether it is single or double blind or open, the bibliometrics and the content innovation. Tools which could help in choosing the right journal. Well, one could log on and go to the specific journal and then look at or go to the search toolbar and then search regarding the details of the journal. One can also go to the guide of authors on the journal's website to find the, on the journal homepage who is the publisher, then keep to the guide of authors within the manuscript and then this will help us save the time. Therefore, this guide of authors is a way to present your paper in your way and the reference is also simplified. So how to structure the article? The structure includes title, abstract and keywords, the search and find includes introduction, methods or methodology with results and discussion and then telling one's own story includes the conclusion, acknowledgements, 
references and any supporting materials. So let's look at these one by one. When it comes to manuscript titles, these need to be effective. They should identify the main issue of the article, should be concise, but also accurate, unambiguous, specific and complete. The title should use professional language and avoid rarely used abbreviations. The title will attract readers if it is short, catchy and often better cited. These are some of the examples of the original title versus the revised title. Therefore, in my experience, the manuscript title plays a big role in the reviewer and the editor considering whether the article is good enough for the journal or not. Next comes the keywords. These are labels to the manuscript used for indexing and extracting services. These should be very specific and one should use only established abbreviations. For example, DL. These are some of the article titles and their corresponding keywords. One should check the guide for authors for any specific guidance on keywords. Next is the abstract, which in my experience is the advertisement to the article. Therefore, one should keep it as brief as possible. One should summarize the problem, the methodology, the results and conclusions. Here, it is better to provide results which are numeric in nature. Also, one must make sure that it is clearly written and it is easy to understand. It is accurate and specific while also being catchy. Write this last so that it can accurately reflect the entire content of the article. One could follow the rule of 10 in which one or two sentences would refer to the aim of the article, two to three sentences of materials or methods which are used, then couple of sentences for results and then lastly the discussions and the conclusions could include about couple of sentences. Then comes the introduction which explains the problem, describes the approach which is used by the researcher of the article and also mentions any existing solutions and limitations. This is an example of an existing introduction. In my experience the last part of the introduction must surely highlight the novelty of the article and it should tell the reader why the reader should actually go ahead and read the article further. Next is the methods or the methodology which is used in the article. It describes how the problem was studied. One could include detailed information to allow any repetition. One should not describe previously published procedures but cite it very clearly and then identify the equipments and or the materials which are used. Proper notations must be included in the formula and the simple symbols which are used. One should not forget to present the controls which are used here. This shows an example of the method in one of the articles. In my experience, the methodology is the most important if your article is simulation based study. Therefore, the further results by the methodology become very very important. As I said, the next part is the results which could include only the data of primary importance that is the main and unexpected findings. One could use supplementary data for data for secondary importance. One could use subheadings to keep the results of the same type together and avoid redundancy. One could use figures and tables appropriately for efficiency and clarity definitely provides statistical analysis. In my experience, I have seen many authors only write what can be observed from the figures and the tables. Rather, in addition, one must also analyze and infer from those results. The caption and legend should be self-explanatory and enable the figure to stand alone. It must not happen that the reader is really confused by looking at the plots and is not able to understand the same. Next, maximize the visual versus the space. Do not have multiple graphs. See if multiple plots can be combined together to use the space efficiently. Use color only when necessary. Uncrowded plots, restrict data sets, well-selected scales, access labels, label size are always appreciated. These are just some examples of results which require some table or which do not need a table. 
is quite easy to see that on the left hand side the data is so much that it requires a table whereas on the right hand side really does not require a table. Then comes the discussion of these results. This is the most important part in my opinion specifically if the article is simulation results based. In this discussion section one could interpret the results, infer from the results. Also the discussion should correspond to the results and complement them. Then one could compare published results with their own. One should avoid statements that go beyond what the results could support, non-specific expressions, new terms not already defined or mentioned in the article, speculations on possible interpretations that are not rooted in facts. Then comes the conclusion. This should not be a copy-paste version of the abstract, rather it should explain how the work advances the present state of knowledge. It should not repeat results or the abstract which I have already mentioned. It should discuss uses, extensions or applications and suggest future experiments. Always share your work. And then one needs to be clear to help the reviewers and editors judge the work and its impact. One could add acknowledgements and could acknowledge advisors, any funders, proofreaders and suppliers who may have donated materials. References, again in my opinion, the most important section or part of the article. Do not include too many references. Always ensure to have completely absorbed the material which are being referenced. Avoid excessive self-citations or citations to publications from the same region or institute. Also follow any requirements specifically outlined in the guide of authors for the journals and consider using a reference manager such as Mendeley. So overall, what is the process of writing or how can one build an article? This is my opinion. We always start with the figures or tables, that is the data which belongs to ourselves, the researcher, followed by what was the method which was used, the results, the discussion. This is the most important part of the article because this is my own work followed by conclusion, the introduction, and then the title, abstract, and keywords. And then you have a downward flow in the article. Then comes the idea of submitting the article. Well, always revise before submission. Do not get bored by rereading again. You can also give your article to a colleague who could point out certain issues in the article before submission. Always try to give a cover letter with submission. At least that is my habit when I do it. This is the chance to speak directly to any editor. Explain the main findings and motivation. Highlight the novelty and significance of the results. This is the most important aspect in the covering letter. State any final approval of all the co-authors. Any prior reviews or revisions which you may have conducted. Any special requirements, example, suggested reviewers if asked or permitted by the journal and any conflicts of interest if they exist. This would include direct financial, example employment, grants, patents, indirect financial which will fund expert testimony etc. Career or intellectual example promotion rivalry, institutional or personal belief. This must be stated. Then comes the peer review and response to reviewers. Well, peer review helps to determine the quality, validity, significance and originality of research. It finds out if the article presents state of art work, improves the quality of the article. Publishers are outside the academic process and are not prone to any favor. Publishers facilitate the review process by investing in online review systems and providing tools to help editors and reviewers. This is not how the peer review works. Rather, it has a structured way of performing the review. We start by submitting an article. If the basic requirements are met, then the reviewers are assigned. The review or the recommendation is provided by the reviewers, which are then collected. A decision is made Either it is a direct accept or a reject or if a revision is required then the article is revised and the entire process is then 
followed again. So what are the reviewers basically looking for? At least this is what I look for. Definitely the importance of the hypothesis in the article, its originality, whether it provides a clear progression through the article and it should be well presented. When it comes to responding the reviewer comments, always remember not to use a language which, is not, which does not go down well with the reviewers. Also do not oppose with the reviewers, rather if you do not agree with a particular comment there is a way to actually respond to that. So this shows two sides of how one could address the reviewer comments. Next is ethical publishing which has become very important very late. The general principles of who is listed first, the first author who conducts or supervises the data analysis and presentation and interpretation of the results. The co-authors make intellectual contribution to the data, review the paper draft and must be able to present the results, defend the implications and discuss study limitation. The corresponding author could be denoted with a star on the subscript puts the paper together and submits the paper to the review. Abuses must be avoided. There should not be any ghost authors that is leaving out authors who should be included and also there should not be any gift authors including authors when they did not really contribute significantly. Next is the issue of plagiarism which we are all aware of therefore one, one must absolutely avoid it. Any of the following can be plagiarized. The words, ideas, diagrams, programs, findings, writings, any printed material, lectures, it could include copying word for word, paraphrasing, text recycling, self plagiarism. It can be easily detected, but it can also be easily avoided. Most of the highly rated journals use Authenticate to cross check. Then comes the idea of how to promote the research to obtain impact. Well. We have already seen the volume of research articles which has now grown at a very large speed. For most researchers, it's really a challenge to keep up with the literature. Therefore, one must make sure that the research gets attention it deserves and ensure that it doesn't fall through the cracks. Therefore, spend time on making sure that the article is clear and concise. Share your research data. Use easy to understand charts and professional illustrations use clear and correct language, use strong keywords, headings and captions, link the article with other content on the web, example other articles, data repositories and include relevant authorship information. Promote your article through various platforms. Lately, preprints have become very popular. You could have press releases, article collections, any share links. Also, as I've already mentioned, apart from preprints, conferences are a good way to network, connect online. You could use a lay summary, your institution's communication channels, audio slide presentation, keeping your profile up to date with the latest publications, and lastly, making absolute use of various social media platforms. Then, one could monitor the article over various platforms. Here, I show one example through which we could do it. Lastly, always try to improve your impact. Share preprints. Ensure that the article's title, abstract and conclusion is very clear as everybody reads them first. Then, always share your research and collaborate and do not compromise on the quality of the research. Thank you for watching the video. Do like and comment on the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.